ladies and gentlemen, in the morally superior, highly educated world of almost always apoplectic liberal Democrats, Rolling Stone said it best. Jack Smith has an indictment. Trump has a massive plan for revenge. The thrice-indicted former president and his allies have long been drawing plans to undo Smith's investigations, as well as punish everyone involved. And so, if you look at everything from wonderful, morally superior, almost always apoplectic liberal sensibilities, Trump should just simply accept that he's indicted by his direct political rivals, and he should also accept, wait, what's this? DNC and Clinton campaign agree to steal dossier funding fine. So Donald Trump should be very happy that he's indicted while his direct political rivals who are indicting him get away with serious, serious crimes in addition to setting them up and framing him with a steal dossier. They pay a fine. No big deal. The FEC fined Clinton, but not Trump. And, of course, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Honorable James Comey, you can hear the Honorable James Comey on this channel, did not find any intent. This is Time Magazine, why the Federal Bureau of Investigation let Hillary Clinton off the hook. And so you have the Honorable James Comey saying there was no intent for owning uh, numerous private servers siphoning top-secret intelligence and classified data for four years during President, o President Obama's administration. Then, of course, you have a Trump should just be fine with 51 intelligence officials lying, um, lying and saying that uh, Hunter's obvious pay-to-play, possibly possible graft and bribery schemes with Joe Biden in a laptop that had incriminating data and evidence, not just hearsay or gossip or a steel dossier, actual evidence where people are literally asking them for influence. They were literally influence peddling within those emails. And then we find out, oh, by the way, the emails are legitimate, the laptop is real, and the 51 former intelligence officials lacked the intelligence that they were supposed to uh, possess. So, of course, you have government agencies, you have former intel officials all going to bat for the Democratic Party. And last but not least, you're supposed to believe that it is impossible for Democrats to cheat anyone, yet they cheat their own candidates, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, to resign as DNC chair. Wasserman Schultz, Wasserman Schultz steps down as DNC chair. By the way, hit subscribe to this channel right now, ladies and gentlemen. I used to be the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post, and the unofficial scribe of Sanders was most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post, about six, seven years ago. I am now, I, I support Donald J. Trump, and I've done so for about, what, three, four years now. And the reason is because we had record low poverty. We had re every demographic group in this country reached a record low in poverty. And also we had record highs in household median income. And we had the Doha Agreement, Abraham Accords, first president to step foot in North Korea. When I was a, uh, a delusional Bernie Sanders supporter uh, who truly felt that he would be against a very corrupt system, I didn't realize that it was Donald Trump that opposed a very corrupt militant um, in many ways insidious political system. Trump opposes never-ending military conflict. Democrats and the Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld, Lincoln Project Republicans do not. So you vote for Trump if you want uh, an end to endless wars, and if you, you vote for Trump if you want uh, a better economy. It's pretty obvious. You look at his track record. But I just showed you just three or four examples of how the system is skewed against Donald Trump and how the system props up Joe and Hunter and Clinton and all the rest. Now, when Rolling Stone and others say he was gonna, he's going he's gonna to implement a plan for revenge, um, it's not revenge. What Donald Trump is doing is simply saying, look, you're, going, you're accusing him of things he didn't do. He was never an operative of the Kremlin. Ever, ever, ever. There was never even a reason to investigate Trump. You'd have to be, you, you would have had to have been a complete and utter imbecile to believe that Trump was working uh, for uh, the Russian government or, you know, if, if you, like, 
ignored history class in eighth grade and you didn't know what the McCarthy era was and you didn't know what the Red Scare was and you just thought that Trump was a reincarnation of the entire Cold War and that you had to uh, pretend to be a, a Cold Warrior against him, well, then you just you just believed complete nonsense, information that misinforms, just fake and false news. And all the while, Democrats were accusing Trump of things he never did, and now they're indicting him for things he never did, okay? They're trying to indict him on racketeering in Georgia, for example. Just one, ex this is just one example, okay? For, for that type of case to be leveled, there has to be a criminal organization. He was not running a criminal organization. He had a cabinet and he had Republicans in a conservative red Republican state. Georgia is historically a conservative Republican state. Okay, so they've indicted Republicans and cabinet members who happen to agree with him. But you know what? It'll be overturned by the Supreme Court or the state Supreme Court because you it's not a criminal act to agree with Donald Trump, okay? Furthermore, um, to simply say, let's say Trump says that he was, uh, that it was stolen from him, okay? It, from a legal perspective, you cannot say that it is false because he has a rebuttal to the fact-checking statements regarding a suitcase or anything else that they've debunked. So you can try to debunk everything Trump says, okay? But Stacey Abrams still believes that Jack Kemp, or sorry, that Brian Kemp um, cheated her. So she still thinks that she won and she's uh, the governor of Georgia. Okay, so and you can, you can look at uh, President Obama or you know, when he was running in 2008, and all the things he said about Clinton's campaign and Clinton's campaign starting the myth that he wasn't born in the country. It wasn't Trump. It was Hillary Clinton's campaign. There's a Guardian article and there's also a New York Times article uh, citing and highlighting that uh, for all to see. It's public record. OK, Democrats play very dirty. They cheat all the time. Ask Bernie Sanders. That's why Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign in 2016 and then promptly joined Clinton camp Clinton's campaign. So very bizarre anomalies took place. You have red states going Democrat and you have a person who won the presidency, mashed potato brains, who couldn't really even form a sentence. So. He's slurring his speech and, you know, he's ins making insulting comments, for example, to Charlemagne the God. You're not who you are if you don't vote for me. Only a Democrat could get away with all of this. And so objective observers are looking and saying, well, you know what? I don't like Trump, but he might have a point. So to, 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 to say that uh, Democrats would never have cheated and that everything was debunked is a false statement in and of itself. You're not debunking claims of impropriety when you've never investigated, for example, affidavits or uh, people who under sworn testimony will say that they saw very bizarre outlandish things take place. The people who investigated, whether it was state recounts or very quick superficial investigations, did not um, engage in leveling congressional subpoenas, for example. Congress wasn't involved. There wasn't congressional testimony. The Federal Bureau of Investigation wasn't involved. Trump had nothing at his disposal to investigate the claims that he made. So when you hear uh, the Associated Press um, never state that Trump being a Russian operative is categorically false, but stating that all of his claims against Biden are categorically false when it comes to uh, 2020, you need to ask yourself, well, the Mueller probe was prosecuted and investigated with every single possible tool from government agencies to media to investigative journalists. They never stopped investigating baseless, cl baseless claims. Then they said, oopsie, there's nothing there. With Trump, he made a number of claims, none of which were truly investigated, never truly had recounts. And the one time, for example, in Arizona, there was a, an actual um, tech company. Oh, my God, the media went nuts, tried to disparage it. 
never truly addressed the questions that tech company had. Anyway, hit subscribe to this channel. He's going after people who wrongfully went after him. That isn't revenge. That's called the law. Give me your thoughts. Thank you.